Welcome everyone to another episode of Mini Money, your go-to podcast for all things finance and money management. I am Francesca, your host, and with me today I have the editor of Murphy Money, Ed Greaves. And today is not just like another episode, but it's also Pension Awareness Week. So let's start and we can talk about maybe the word of the week, which of course this week is pensions. So what can you tell us Ed, about pensions? Yeah, that's right. So I, uh, I actually, we mentioned this in our little newsletter that we're uh, putting out later on today, which uh, if you don't already subscribe to, please get on the website and subscribe uh, to the newsletter. You'll get that in your inbox every week with all the kind of latest stuff uh, about personal finance. This week, uh, like you said, Francesca, uh, it's Pension Awareness Week. Um, not usually a kind of a big fan of of uh, of these kind of awareness weeks or days or whatever they are, um, but uh, it just so happens that pensions are actually really important um, and and they're really kind of uh, influential in our in our kind of long term financial personal financial story uh, and something that people ignore all too frequently, unfortunately. So yeah, so we're trying to kind of raise a little bit of awareness about that. Um, so. That's our word of the week this week in uh, kind of, sorry, you're going to say something. No, I was just like, I wanted to ask you, like, yeah, yeah, that is the word of the week. But why, for example, like me as a young person, I never think about like, you know, pensions and this kind of thing. So why do you think that like for someone that is like that is in her on his late 20s or like, you know, in her 20s, it's important? Yeah, so we wanted to obviously have the word of the week just to kind of get a basic ex- explanation of what a pension is, right? And why it yeah. might matter to somebody like you or, you know, somebody like me and my, e- even in my kind of 30s now. Um, uh, pension is kind of the most long term financial thing you'll do in your life, basically. Uh, the earlier you start, the better the outcome will be. So the kind of the later you start, the more you have to put into it. So it actually matters. Yeah, when of you're course. Old. So, okay, what is a pension? A pension is 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 kind of a, a a slightly boring way of saying it's a it's a savings pot that you can only use when you retire and when you turn a certain age. The current age at the moment is fifty five. You can access it, but is that is increasing in line uh, with the state pension age increasing? So it'll go up to fifty seven in a few years. Basically, it's a it's a form of savings account that has special kind of tax. Uh, benefits attached to it and the tax benefit of that is when you uh, put money in you get tax relief so if you're on a on kind of normal rated tax income tax you get 20 percent if you pay higher rate tax you get 40 percent relief so uh, in a nutshell that that's kind of all it is Uh, but you get different kinds of pensions so state pension which Mm -hmm. is not so state pension is is basically something you contribute towards, but you're not really contributing. You're paying tax, and they the government basically notch up credits for you, national insurance credits. And once you have enough credits, you become eligible for the full state pension. Then the main pension, which everybody these days, or most people these days, will have, is a workplace pension. Uh-huh. So that's something that you will contribute to, and your employer will contribute to uh, at differing levels. Uh, and basically, what you put into that, you get out of it. Uh, and then the third kind, which is personal or private pension, which is something that you create for yourself. You go and find a company to do it for you, have what's called a self-invested personal pension. So you can put money in that by yourself and and invest it kind of for the long term. Uh, and that's kind of it in a nutshell. But for a person, let's say, like such as me, that like I, I am an employee, uh, which kind of pension should I go for, for example? Well, so you'll get you'll get a workplace pension, um, and that'll be put in place for you by your your by your your employer. You won't mm-hmm. actually, unfortunately, have a choice typically with who your provider is. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's kind of it's important to 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 look around uh, if you want to have a personal pension as well. And what's quite common these days, particularly when people kind of move around jobs, is they end up mm-hmm. with, you know, several small little pension pots that maybe uh, aren't doing anything or not being contributed to. So it's worth looking at whether you want to consolidate those into one place. Uh, I will say, though, uh, if you've got lots of pensions or you've got lots of money in pensions and that you've got different kinds, it isn't quite important to potentially take some advice, seek out a financial advisor who can help you with that, uh, because sometimes the, the decision making can be a bit more complex. The, if you've got a workplace pension, it's it's invested and you're contributing to it. Basically, just, you know, 
leave it alone as much as possible make sure you you're putting you know money in every month and not basically giving up you know the benefits that come with that and are there any tax benefits or incentives associated with pension contribution that people should be aware of Yes, so obviously you have the tax relief, which I mentioned just now, but then at the other end, kind of when you're taking money out of a pension, there are uh, benefits that, that come with that. So you get uh, 25% uh, tax, like tax-free lump sum, basically, is, mm -hmm. is the kind of the, the main one. So you can take a quarter of your pension out and not have to pay any tax on it, uh, basically. Uh, they got rid of the lifetime allowance now, so the amount you save into it is unlimited. Uh, I will say, though, I mean, and there are other benefits kind of that go, that go with it. Um, pensions are, com are complicated, and when it comes to withdrawing money out of them, it is, again, it's complicated. It can be not necessarily difficult, but if you do the wrong thing, it can incur all kinds of issues uh, that can create problems so i'd say especially if you're kind of towards that that age where you can have access to your pension so 55 and that kind of thing it's definitely worth thinking about getting advice um and basically not not listening to kind of random internet advice you know information <laughs> about it get proper kind of regulated uh, person who, who can who can guide you the best way to kind of make a decision around that that being said there's lots of great information on things like the money and pension service which is a government-backed initiative that provides lots of kind of you know online help uh, to help people kind of you know decode some of the more difficult bits of of pensions so that can be a really good resource too Perfect. Thank you so much. So right now, let's shift our focus to the latest post of the week, I would say. So we have amazing writers for this week, like amazing bloggers. One of them is Helena Jones, um, that like she wrote four things to do this Pensions Awareness Week. So add any particular tips that like we, we can draw from this article? Yeah, so obviously with Pension Awareness Week, we wanted to kind of uh offer more kind of kind of constructive ideas for people to 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 take away and think about with their pensions so helen has written a re written a really nice article for us uh kind of with four very simple ideas that people could people can can kind of have when they want if they want to kind of get more bit more proactive with looking after their pensions so the first is is just basically establishing how many you've got making sure you've got all the paperwork in the right place for them it's quite common, surprisingly common, that people lose track of their pensions. That's why the government has a pension tracing service. Mm, and like I said earlier, important. yeah, like I said earlier, if you have, you know, if you go through lots of different jobs, you can end up with lots of different pots and, and it can be actually surprisingly easy to lose a pension by mistake kind of thing. Uh, then, you know, other stuff includes kind of making sure your details are up to date with the providers of the pensions, because that's another way that it's going to end up getting lost. Uh, and then other really cool things like uh, making sure you're, you know, you're contributing as much as you think you should be into a pension. It's really difficult to decide, you know, how much should I be contributing and, you know, what's the right amount? Um, there is no easy answer, unfortunately. You know, you get rules of thumb like you need to have in retirement your income needs to be two-thirds of of what kind of your working life income would be so that's predicated on the idea that you if you buy a house and you pay off the mortgage when you retire you know your your expenditures is going to be the same minus whatever you were paying on your mortgage and that's kind of fine but you know it's each to their own and you have to figure it out and again when you get older when you start getting closer to retirement Think about that financial advice and, and whether you can get some help kind of mapping out the future and what your retirement looks like. If you're like younger, like you or mm -hmm. me, uh, the, the kind of basic point is as much as you can afford, you know, get it into there, into that and pension. And, and because the longer you have, the more you'll get out of it. Yeah, it makes sense. And then we have another exciting piece that is from Elena Wojo and is about pensions. What could be better than free money? So... What about this piece? What can you tell us about it? Yeah, Helena Wardle is one of our newer contributors. She's a, she's a chartered financial planner and she's the founder of a, a business called Money Means, mm -hmm. which is kind of a business that helps people kind of figure out, you know, what money means to them and, and other really, you know, great stuff. Uh, so she's written a piece for us very kindly this week to do with pensions again, uh, basically reminding everybody that, that what could be better about, a, you know, a financial product than getting free money. And that is the point with a pension is you get free money. And this isn't about the tax reliefs or anything like that, because, you know, that's a tax break. What this is about is that the employers will offer you 
uh, basically, you know, extra money on top of your salary to go into a pension. And that is, you know, it's it's free money. It's not being taken away from your income because that's what's already coming out of your income to go into the pension. So, yeah, you know, I, and I think that she makes a really good point in that piece that uh, sometimes pensions can have an image problem. You know, they, they're dull. Uh, but, you know, what if we rebranded it to kind of passive? I think what is it she calls it? She calls it a passive in income strategy or something like that. You have to read the piece. But, yeah, really good. Just really hype turning, you know, turning the whole kind of subject area on its head a little bit. Uh, the last thing we had uh, just before we move on uh, was uh, many people in pension industry will know a guy called Steve B, a uh, great friend exactly. of, of, of Maldi Money. Um, He's also a fantastic cartoonist, so he's been sharing us with us some of his kind of favourite pensions themed cartoons over the years. Uh, and if that's something that uh, that kind of uh, you might enjoy, then uh, then check it out on the website. The website and also on all our social media channels yeah, right now. So like we have LinkedIn, Twitter, and also Instagram. So and Threads as well. So we'll go to check it out also there because we're gonna post every day till the end of the week, like a new cartoon every day. And Ed, like any other pieces that you want to talk to us about or any other news regarding this week that maybe you want to share with us? Yeah, so the last thing, and actually it, it, it turned out to be quite a bit fortuitous that this is Pension Awareness Week, um, because we actually got the latest kind of wage and employment data from the Office for National Statistics, ONS, uh, and it showed wage data going up uh, at, I think it was about eight and a half percent, which is really, wow. really high, yeah, record level. So, you know, on one level, that's a really good thing. It means that people, you know, workers on the whole, are getting better pay rises than they were actually inflation beating pay rises which is a big you know kind of shift uh, in terms of what's been going on the past couple of years why does this matter for pensions though it matters for pensions because typically the numbers around inflation or wages that come out in september dictates how much the state pension is going to go up the next year and this comes down to a thing called the triple lock which is a guarantee from the government that the state pension which is our benefit that is paid to older people uh will go up by either inflation wages or 2.5 percent every year and it's become a really contentious political issue as a result because particularly last year when inflation was soaring uh kind of pensions were you know pensions who on a kind of relative uh level compared to kind of work people you know working age families are better off uh, generally speaking, uh, we're getting kind of, you know, inflation matching pension pay, pension pay rises. Interesting, actually, I wrote the piece yesterday. Since that happened, um, the government has said that it might actually fiddle with the formula a little bit, mm. uh, partly to save itself kind of a billion quid or so, uh, but also because it's uh, seen as uh, uh, slightly unfair, but all, and they're using the excuse that because of they gave away kind of uh, one-off bonuses to to public sector workers. It kind of distorted the numbers a little bit. But yeah, it's a political problem that's going to rumble on. Uh, my personal kind of view of it is that it isn't really terribly fair. I think there's probably, I wouldn't, you know, never say get rid of it, but I think there's probably a better and more sustainable middle ground. Uh, the state pensions are really expensive thing that we all have to pay for it comes out of your your taxes and my taxes it's not a pot of money like many people think that's kind of waiting for there for when you retire and the thing is is when we retire it might not even exist anymore so, so. you know how, how is it fair that we have to fund it now um but yeah tricky question unfortunately well, thank you so much for this week and for this like new mini money podcast and nothing thank you for listening and see you next week lovely thanks francesca see you soon